I'm back everyone. Um, this it's Saturday and uh, we are about to do the final sitting with Professor Brian Cox who's joining us over FaceTime. He hasn't seen the picture yet, uh, which is uh, incredibly self restrained. I'm not sure I'd be able to do that. Um, but uh, he, um, it, it will make it more interesting, partly for me, um, because I get to actually see if people are looking at the picture along the way, you don't, you know, they, they've kind of been got used to it. Whereas obviously when people haven't, then that they get the impression of the overall painting uh, is a really interesting one. Um, and uh, but also hopefully it'll be um, interesting. Hopefully it'll be a good reaction, but we'll see. There's still a little bit to do. I was, um, I, uh, I was saying earlier that the, um, I don't know if it's the same when you're writing a book or doing something else. I imagine that there's an element of it that, um, uh, yeah, you tend to get a lot of the work done in sort of bursts. Um, obviously, the sittings in this case is no a sound main thing. on Instagram, sorry. There's no sound on, okay. On Instagram? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, that. Yeah, yeah, is there something going wrong with that? Um, uh, I should end it. Do you want to, yeah, maybe, maybe stop the stream and start again. Uh, see, I'll just put this one as a backup as well. We'll edit it later. Um, so yeah, um, aha, just, just water at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We were discussing that if it goes well, we might open the bottle of something fizzy later. Cause, um, Brian, like myself, like is, is interested in champagnes and we sometimes compare unusual ones, um, which obviously requires opening several bottles cause you can't compare one on its own. <laughs> Uh, is it working now, the Instagram? Do we know? Um, what have we been saying? All fine. I'm Good. just seeing what they're saying okay. online. Um, okay, well, let's. I think we'll get started anyway, and hopefully we'll overcome these um, live hiccups. Um, Still no sound. Just on Instagram, on, on the feed. On Instagram. Let's, why would it be doing that? What's going on? Is, it, um, <laughs> is there some Excellent. muting button? Is there a mute button or something? Yeah, it's your own film. There was sound. Um, uh, hmm, no sound. Do you want to sort of write, write a reply that if, if we're going to try and fix it, but if they can't, they can look at it online Stop on it. the website? Okay. Um, because I don't know what to do about that immediately. Um, do, you want to, do you want to look up if there's a setting or something? Love this technology. That's the joy of doing things live, isn't it? Live television. <laughs> this is great. This is what people like. Yeah, exactly. When it all goes horribly wrong. Yeah. Um, I think this kind of, it's, 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 it's quite fun at the moment. I think there's the, you, I feel like we might be forgiven for a bit of it at the moment, partly because of the lockdown, partly because obviously we haven't done this before. Um, yeah. It's only Instagram anyway, isn't it? It's only Instagram. So the, yeah, exa exactly. I'll just have to switch over to the feed. Actually, I did just remember to do put on Twitter that I'm doing this as well, so that people there just... might jump onto it. Uh, so I had a, a good friend of mine um, I said, someone, like, said they looked at the they, they'd been watching a bit of it and said yeah. um, said they thought it was excellent oh good, so good. <laughs> well that's the, hey uh, there's a danger of like you know expectation management going wrong in that case um, yeah. it's only it's only kind of it's definitely new there if it's not working I can try the iPad just one more one last thing because it's on this one as well sorry Brian might be a second Upset the sort of social media audience. I know that sort of some, some, including my own kids, might struggle if it's not on social media. Um, so let's just try with this. And if it does work, then I can put this from the other angle or something. I don't know. Or, or not. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, I try I'm my. Sync chat, by the way. I know we probably oh, yeah. in this. Long. That's I'm a good do idea, that. though. Let's just sync up. So hang on a sec. Great. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I, I have the iPad there, but partly because I found that you know, every time I've tried to do this, something's gone wrong, whether the sound thing's gone wrong, or the video's gone wrong, or stopped halfway. So I'm just trying to cover myself by having multiple cameras rolling, because I think, you know, what would be nice is, is if these work to, like, you know, edit it down and have it there for people to watch, you know, long term, whether it's to listen to the extraordinary, insightful conversation, or 
just to see how I do it, you know, whether it's to see how thing, to do things when it goes well or how not to do it if it goes badly. <laughs> so have you, have you um, worked on it at all in a non-filmed situation? Not with like, this one, not, not so far with this one or with um, Dexter's one. Um, and I, I don't think I've yet, and there's some, there may be one or two bits which I haven't joined onto something and put online yet. The idea is that we have the whole thing that people can see and pretty much all of it, I mean, certainly most of it. But we said so we did a little um, half hour yesterday, um, partly to chat and partly just to sort of like to, um, uh, correct a few things. So you may notice it's kind of evolved very slightly, um, but that was, I filmed that and I certainly, I think, yeah, that, that's what's interesting about it really is, yeah, um, after I got over my initial sort of stress about, about the idea of it, actually, I think it's, it's I think it's great, and I think um, you know, uh, for the, I think especially for people who who actually do want to see the whole evolution of it and how I do it, because I'm because yeah. I never, yeah, I haven't really done this before, and I wasn't really taught. I mean, I wasn't taught. I didn't go to art school, so I I don't have that thing of necessarily knowing what the rules are or what you're doing and why, and, and I. Therefore, I can articulate some things. I can certainly articulate what I'm trying to do uh, and what I'm doing with the, you know, uh, in terms of you know, what I'm thinking about. But uh, I might not be explaining certain things that I'm doing with the paint because either they seem obvious or because I don't, <laughs> don't know how I'm doing it. Um, so uh, from that point of view, at least people can see it and they can ask me about it afterwards. Um, do you do much live stuff? You do live radio quite a bit, don't you? And, uh, you, actually, you, and you do live performances to, to big stadia and that sort of thing. Yeah, so the, on stage television-wise, um, it primarily stargazing live, right. which wasn't on last year, um, but should come back, I think, because it's a superb program in my view. And uh, so we, we're hoping to do some more of those. I, I think that, the to me, the um, I don't know if... It, you, you remember them, but the, the ones we did at Jodrell Bank, we did some special ones, yeah. you know, we did one in Australia and one in Kennedy Space Center for the, uh, for the Apollo 50th anniversary, which are really nice. Yeah. But I think that there's something about, um, live astronomy in Manchester in January, <laughs> which is at Jodrell Bank, yeah. you know, which is just uniquely, it's kind of a uniquely sort of British thing, if you know, I mean, yeah. you know, the, it's it's almost the worst place in the world to do astronomy, right? Manchester, <laughs> a one off. But of course, the, the Jodrell Bank is a radio telescope, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. Like, uh, but for an optical telescope, you know, for, it be so it's, But I like that. It's kind mm. of very, very, you know, that, that hardy kind of image of a of an amateur astronomer yeah. in an anorak uh, yeah. and, uh, yeah. in, in January when it's yeah. you know. There's a gap in the clouds, and you just managed to get a view of Saturn. Yeah. I, like, I love that. Got to take advantage so, of it. Yeah, that that was I loved. Um, I, I loved doing that, and it's um, it's you like, know, like, it's like Turner, like Turner strapping himself to the ship's mast to get the perfect yeah. view of the storm, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be. You know, it's so easy to do astronomy if you're in the Atacama mm. Desert, which is why. The European Southern Observatory is there, by the way, you know, because it's a great place to put big telescopes. Yeah. But um, but I like that. It's like it, it kind of has the same feel for me as I was going to say train spotting. I'm not insulting train spotters because mm. I used to be a bus spotter. So I used to find a book full of bus numbers um, when I was little. And I used to sit in my um, mum and dad's sort of living room looking out on the road and, and, and write down the numbers of the buses that went past. So, you know, so I, I, I like that sort do of Do you still thing. do that at all? <laughs> Astronomy's got the sense a bit of that about it. Um, and, but, yeah, so. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, if you're, if you're serious about anything, you're not going to worry about, you know, little things like hypothermia or um, uh, looking stupid. You know, you just gotta, you got to get on and do it. Yeah, but, it, I mean, actually, and we, for, we did it, we've done it for many years. And as I said, I'm... I'm pretty sure we'll do some more of them. Um, the we did get quite lucky because that's the great thing about live television. So we had live astronomy from a, 
a muddy field, we called it, the, the muddy field out there in, in Cheshire near, near Jodrell Bank. And um, quite often, you know, over three nights in January, you'd get clear nights. Mm. And then, so we'd get live images of the, of the sky. And it, there's something about that, I think, that connection. Astronomy is probably the only science, really, that you can do easily mm. with nothing at all. Mm. Right? You, you can go out into your garden and you can look up. You don't even need a pair of binoculars. You can look up, you can see the planets. Um, at the moment, your Venus is really bright um, as we speak. And in the morning, if you get up about four or five o'clock in the morning, you'll see Jupiter, Mars and Saturn mm. all in the uh, rising, uh, you know, if you look south, basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a, a subject, a science, a, a pursuit you can just do yourself. It's a perfect lockdown science in a yeah. way. Because, um, you know, I mean, it's hard, I suppose, if you're in a city with the city lights. But even then, you can you can see how the moon changes every night. Mm. Uh, you can see planets, usually, um, if, especially if you're facing sort of roughly south. Um, so, yeah. But the, 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 we go back to your question, the live, live totally, it, that stargazing lives are a really complicated thing because the, we had, you know, we had live feeds. We did, um, we did an eclipse program, a live eclipse and had um, we had a team in a, in a plane uh, up over the clouds uh, mm. filming the eclipse from mm. the plane, you know, and that's um, that's a, um, actually that's actually not true. It was why the, why the, why the why they did um, from the plane? So we had Northern Lights live. Right. Northern oh, I see. Yeah, got it, got it. Yeah. Was, um, that's interesting. I love that footage you get. I've seen a few people flying drones through firework displays. Because you get this sort of like view of I mean, we used to see fireworks obviously from one perspective, and it's very interesting seeing them explode in all directions around, sort of like you know, exploding outwards rather than just kind of coming down. Um, uh, it's nice what you can do with this by changing the angle, changing your view of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and as you say, the, the other part of your question was yeah, the big live shows are um, a completely different. Um, sort of i don't know form of, of form of entertainment or science communication mm. or whatever you call it you know um they're, they're stadium science i didn't think that would be possible do you find um is it difficult because, because when you're doing a live show i suppose you've got, you've got to trust your audience are all going to be able to like kind of cope with going into detail about some things i sometimes find if i'm doing talks you know um particularly when you do things like at schools uh, you know, you can sort of sometimes sort of spot some of the sort of younger members of the audience getting a bit twitchy when you go into too much technical detail on things. Um, uh, it's a funny thing when you can actually see, and I, that's, I guess, when you can actually see your audience rather than just doing something where, like, you're on radio or you're no. broadcasting, although there's you're, a little bit of, kind of a sense of feedback here in the sense that people can send messages in. But the actual thing of seeing the people kind of like, you know, whether they're really enjoying it and attentive or, you know, struggling to stay at work and getting fidgety and looking out the window can be quite a, can be quite helpful, but can also be a bit of a distraction quite off-putting. Yeah, oh, you really do. I mean, it's it's really interesting. Um, in, I mean, the biggest audiences that I um, had on the last tour were places like Birmingham Arena, the O2, you know, with 12,000 people, 10, 12,000 people. And for a lecture, which is essentially what it is, that's that's unusual. Right? I'm not even sure if anyone's ever done it on that scale before, you know, 10, 12. Yeah. But you get these moments, and it's different from night to night. It's exactly the same as an audience of 100 people in the sense that sometimes you'll be talking and I'll be explaining something about um, what it would be like to fall in across the event horizon of a black hole, for example. Mm quite technical stuff and there are some nights when you I pause and it's completely silent mm. right? and, and you know that everybody is listening yeah and there's other nights when it's a bit drifty you know there's a bit of shuffling there's a bit of, it's a common thing actually everyone who's done anything on stage will know is that um coughing is something that co that the coughing level yeah. in an audience of even a few hundred people, but certainly thousands of people, is related to how much attention people yeah. are paying. How you, you've, If you've lost them, there's more coughing. Is that you what, say some, do people be, forget be, to cough? Do people forget to cough when, they're, when something's interesting? The weird thing, if you say something really quite, you know, a profound thing and you really land a point, mm. 
and you get to know what those points are in a live show mm. when you do it over and over again, then you will you can leave a gap and no one will cough. Mm. So even though you think that coughing is an involuntary thing, it obviously isn't. It's yeah. obviously got something to do with how engaged you are in the thing. So there are all those, every live performer who's watching this will know that, or every lecturer, right? If you lecture students, it's the same. Mm. If you lose people, everyone starts shuffling around. Yeah. And if you people, everyone's quiet. <laughs> so, but I think what's interesting, though, is that the there's a rhythm in live uh, shows or events and lectures and TV programs and radio programs, which is essentially the same or the same premise, which is that you can go quite deep mm. into, into quite complex ideas as long as there's a rhythm there where you come back again. Mm. And then have a bit of a rest, and have a pretty, pretty picture of something, or you know, something rather nice. Or, and then, you, and then you can rise up again and do something else mm. complicated. So you buy, you essentially buy yourself the luxury or the time right. to explain a um, complicated idea, yeah. as long as you don't you don't carry it on for too long. Mm. You know, a couple of minutes, whatever. It's different length of time in television or life shows i find it can be longer i find you can be much more complicated in a live show uh, than you can on television i find mm. but uh but you've got you've got to give people a rest mm. you know it's the difference between i suppose in an undergrad even in an undergraduate lecture you you've got to you you learn with experience that if you go full on even with you know it's a captive audience that the, 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 the students have got to do an exam mm. and they've got they'll, they'll sit there and listen but you notice that if, if you you can't just pile information on at the same yeah. rate, fifty minutes, um, you, you've got to there's got to be ups and downs. Do you still do do you still do lectures? Yeah, in the in the autumn hmm. uh, at the University of Manchester. So if if you're listening or watching and you're going to be there next year, if you're coming in September, then in September, October, November, December, you'll get about. What about 12, 14 lectures from me, something like that? Wow. On special relativity <laughs> and primarily quantum mechanics, actually, this year. Will there be some black hole information this year, seeing as that's been a particular focus of interest? I mean, it's quite, a, you know, it's a, it's a first year syllabus. So it's special relativity, which is nothing to do with black holes. It's the foundation for them, but it's not really. That's E equals MC squared and that stuff. And then quantum mechanics. So, but I might try and slip a bit in because it is in the, the the meeting of those two things, relativity and quantum mechanics, that black holes get really interesting. Hmm. Stephen Hawking is so famous for Hawking radiation, hmm. which quantum mechanics on the event horizon of a black hole, basically, or near the event horizon of a black hole. What are you doing there? I'm looking at you. Doing, yeah. You're doing a classic artist thing there. Yeah, I know. Well, what I was thinking, so that that thing is often measuring, which you do at the start. You know, you might do it with your brush to see how things are scaling. Um, the but it's sort of because I'm quite close to it. It's quite big. That's I didn't really do that with this one. Um, it's more what I'm actually doing is 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 a slightly sort of more analog. I'm I'm covering bits up to see, and then taking my finger away to see basically if it's better or worse if that bit was changed. Um, uh, so it's like a kind of very, very sort of basic kind of quick decision making kind of. That's a technique. So, so you're looking at the whole picture and you're covering a bit up. Yeah, and so and then if you take your finger away and uh, it's 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 better with that with that yeah when with better when you covered it up. There's something wrong with it, um, and if there's no difference, then. You know, then it's fine. Uh, it doesn't necessarily tell you what's wrong with it, but it means you know, when you're trying to sort of like diagnose where you feel there's something that's kind of not quite right. So I'm just worried about whether I was making you look sort of like your eyes were looking in slightly different directions. But I think actually I just made a slight. The funny thing with the eyes, it, well, the thing with the, <laughs> I don't think your eyes do that. Um, but yeah, the thing with the eyes is that you actually a bit like the kind of corners of the mouth. You can you don't have to change very much to dramatically change the sense of whether it's the direction they're looking or the the, the, the kind of expression uh, and so you know it's 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 one of those things but at the same time you could be very careful with it therefore because obviously you can you know something can be sort of working and you can throw it out if you, if you think you're fixing it but actually changing something that is working 
and it's not always yeah. what you th- what, what looks like that looks wrong that needs to be changed it's often actually something a little bit further away which affects the proportions of it kind of in relation to something else basically mm. so very specifically i was thinking that i was looking a bit too far one way and i think i've yeah, you know, but adding, changing the shadowing shadow over here. Hopefully, it's now kind of. But then, yeah, you know, without getting stepping right back and checking, I don't know. You said something earlier which made me think. Um, what it was now to do the lockdown it's funny the sense of time you get with the lockdown isn't it because um I, 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 almost everyone i've spoken to saying how they found themselves unbelievably busy and they can't understand why because for the most part they certainly aren't doing all the things that they were doing before um i wonder if it's you know that we're filling our time because we feel we should um yeah i think there's a, certainly an element of yeah the beginning of it like well actually at least i can get around to all those things i've been putting off doing for years or learning some new things or watching those box sets or reading those books um, I'd like to hear from anyone who's done all the things they expected to do. Um, and, you know, wherever we are, we are about five, four or five weeks into it. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose that there's two very different populations of people in this lockdown. Well, there's several actually. There are people who still have to work. Yeah, and I suspect that's. Uh, very stressful because you've got to get to work yeah and uh then there are people which fortunately you know like me and i suppose like yeah. you who can actually stay in the house yeah you don't have to go out yeah and that removes that level of stress and um and then i suppose there's a majority of people who are who worried about who are worried about things like yeah will i have a job yeah absolutely in a month so there's different populations of people, aren't there? There are. But imagine, I mean, all of them probably have in common that they are not going out and seeing seeing people, going out in the evenings and going out at weekends and that sort of thing. So um, I imagine to some extent, most people have at least some time uh, for doing things that they, that they don't usually, they're able to spend time doing things they, you know, they wouldn't have been able to do before. As you say, there'd be some, you know, within that, there's certainly, um, you know, uh, and it's yeah. You know, it's also just the uncertainty of not knowing how long it's going to be on for, as you say, what the world's going to be like, and whether you know, your own work's going to be the same afterwards. Or, you know, it's a it's a very strange time. I'll say what I've been thinking about. I've been uh, going back to well, not talking about black holes specifically, mm-hmm. but I've been thinking about maps, which are a, a representation of reality. Mm. Um, but if you think about maps, then um, they're obviously flat maps and not a perfect representation of reality because mm-hmm. we live on a sphere. So a map of the world is necessarily a distortion. Yeah. And the way the distortion is calculated, it's obviously not random. There's mm. a McCade's projection and those things that everyone knows about from school. is interesting because they're, they're, they're made, so the distortions are made to preserve certain aspects of the geometry of the surface and um, depending on what you might want them for. So the standard projection, the, the Mercator projection mm. that, that, you know, so that's the one where we always look at a map of the world and it's, you know, the Greenland is massive yeah. and Antarctica stretches across the whole bottom of the yeah. map, uh, which is obviously a tremendous distortion. But that is a really quite a complicated uh, representation of the world such that angles are preserved for for navigation. So so if you if you draw the, it, the map works so that if you draw the distortion preserves the fact that if you draw a straight line, let's say you're going from um, London to Vancouver, down, yeah, yeah, or yeah, somewhere like that. Mm. So you draw a straight line uh, with a ruler on yeah. the map. Then the angle of that will be the compass heading that you follow at any particular point in order to go to, to, to travel in a straight line from London to Vancouver. So that's the way that map works. Mm. So it, it doesn't preserve areas or distances. I mean, obviously, as you go as you go higher up, so you go 
you go towards the top of the map, the, the actual right. distance between two yeah. points is much smaller mm. than the on the map. But so if you go to the equator... When, you, when, when you're flying to California, as I got to do quite often, um, the you know the map you're seeing on the on the flight is you taking you in a straight line, obviously kind of sent, but you're central to the sort of overall map. So are you are you are you saying that if you're looking at the world from side on from equator level, then that would be the that would be the same line basically. It just happens to be the non distorted version. Yeah, it was it was a fifteen hundreds thing. I think it was a fifteen hundreds or six hundreds. It was worked out uh, so that you get a compass. Literally, you could say right if I keep on a heading of yeah. 60 degrees or whatever it is then i will i will get to where i want to go it, it, it you know it keeps it keeps the compass heading right as you go along a straight line on your map mm. that's how it works out but at the expense of having a gross distortion in distances mm. and areas so the area of a country is not accurately represented yeah. but if you look at a polar map which is the one that, that you know um, airline pilots use if they're going to fly yeah. across the pole if you're going to fly from vancouver to hong kong or something or maybe or, the pole, or, or tokyo whichever way you go mm. you have to go over the pole to get there um then it so i think i think actually something like la singapore or something i think they go over the pole mm. so in case they, they use a different map which uh, where the polar region is correctly represented because if you think about the the pole or the, the north pole on a on a normal map on the standard map of the world is infinitely distorted. Mm. Right, that 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 one point is 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 spread out across the whole yeah. map, right? So it's complete. It's completely worthless and meaningless at the North Pole and the South Pole. Yeah. So you have different maps, and then the reason I was thinking about them was I was trying to explain all the different maps of black holes, where you draw them with very. They, they, they don't look like black mm. holes. They're, they're sort of representations of them, mm. but to do particular things for you. Mm. So you can you can you can change everything so that, for example, certain light rays always go in straight lines, mm. even though they're going in, into the event horizon and to the singularity at the centre, and it would all be very a big curvy mess. Mm. But you can change the map projection so you've got straight lines for certain light rays, so you can see what's happening, mm. and so you can see what what events in the past could influence which events mm. in the future and so on. And you can do that for the whole universe as well. Mm. So, um, but it's, it just reminded me, because we we're talking about yeah. art painting, that, that Escher was very famous for doing this, for distorting the canvas in a particular way. Yeah. And I suppose that's what you're doing, because you're, you're taking a spherical object. Mm. Of, I'm a physicist, so my head is a sphere, right? Mm. Cause, and by, only a biologist would claim that it was anything other than a sphere. <laughs> it's got the properties of a sphere, yeah. right? So, um, but, so you're taking a <laughs> roughly spherical object and making a representation of it yeah. on a tiny surface, yeah, exactly which right. necessarily produces distortion. Yeah. yeah. And something else which I hadn't really thought about until I started playing, oh, we can do the 3D scanning thing. Uh, but we'll do that another time because that's a fun thing. Because I know you've probably done this. Um, but when you make a 3D scan, you obviously get a mesh of your head. But then you also get an image, which so that's basically a sort of like it doesn't have any detail to it. It's just a sort of like a kind of a series of points. It's a shape, basically. Imagine your head in it as a block of plaster, um, and then you get the photo, um, whether it's photogrammetry or just as like a series of photos stitched together, which is I think what they call the pelt map, which it's hilarious because when you see it flat it is it looks like your skin's been taken off and stretched over a cushion or something and it's really kind of it's really horrible because it's the side view and the front view and then the side view all in a sort of like from one point of view yeah it's exactly like making a map of the surface of the earth it's mm, exactly yeah. the problem that you can't because the geometry is different to a flat plane mm. then you have to introduce distortion somewhere and so you you you, you have to choose where you want the distortion to be and how what you want that distortion to do. Of course, another way of um, uh, yeah, representing you know, because it's a bit like sort of sky boxes, isn't it? It's one of those things where you know you could represent the um, inside of a. I mean, you, you represent the, the inside of a sphere, couldn't you? So it would be you know, like planetarium or whatever. So we tend to see the, out, the universe represented on the inside of the spheres and the a globe yeah. being obviously on a sub sphere you know, kind of from outside projected in, you know, towards the inside. But you could equally have the map of the world, you know, 
and you're inside a spherical version of it. I wonder if that would change your conception of... Because effectively, it'd be like being underneath the surface of the Earth, looking up on something which is more or less flat. Um, so it'd be yeah, just as accurate. Then, then, yeah, then you'd have all the areas of the countries would be accurately represented. Mm. The geometry is the same. Yeah. Yeah, they were clever, these people who did navigation yeah. in the 15th, 16th century, you know, and yeah. thinking about how to draw things and represent maps. It's clever stuff. I wonder if um, uh, if it had been done first in the Southern Hemisphere, whether North and South would have been reversed on maps as well. Because, yeah, the, 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 uh, the, I guess Western Europe it tends to be at the top of these maps. Um, uh, an Australian yeah. friend once sent, sent me an Australian map. I don't think it's a real. I don't know if, that, I, 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 if it was playful or a serious thing, but of, of like the map, yeah, south at the top and north at the bottom. It does make you think differently about, and it somehow makes the proportions look different as well. It's funny how we distort things in our minds um, uh, rather than seeing things as they actually are. Yeah, I mean, it, it go. I mean, the standard map of the world just puts the zero, you know, the zero longitude at Greenwich. Greenwich right in the middle of the map yeah. but, um, and that's fine around the equatorial regions and the, the distortion's not too big Yeah. but as I said you get huge distortion at the north and south at high latitudes and low latitudes how are we doing on time we oh, yeah. half an hour. okay good Phew. a bit more time um. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm interested now because yeah. actually I, I noticed what is this the fourth or fifth one we've done and I've noticed when you started yeah. um, it seemed to me at least that you were I'm not insulting you but you were concentrating <laughs> yeah right? you, you, you're much more whereas now you're getting to the end you're, yeah. is it, it does it require more concentration to finish a painting than to start one it, uh, it can go, it can go either way towards the end. If you're very conscious of things being wrong, then fixing those can require a lot of concentration. If you, especially if it's not obvious why it's going wrong, um, but there's also a slight thing now where you kind of I feel like it's going in the right direction, but I'm also getting used to this. And then I look at you and think, well, hang on, this looks more like you than you. And actually, instinctively, I know that can't be right. So actually, by slightly distracting yourself, you can. I don't, it feels like you can sometimes then kind of come back to it and maybe notice. I've noticed a few little things, um, uh, and it's a funny thing. If, if you know, in normal circumstances, there are areas I know I do more to, but actually, um, I was looking at it, uh, you know earlier today, and there's a slight, you know, the kind of some areas are sharp, and some are blurry. That tends to happen sometimes anyway. But it's it does it is a little bit. It's certainly representative of, of the kind of the quality of the yeah you know, the, the kind of like the, you know, the FaceTime call, which um, it's funny because it's it, it gets a bit, it, it's a bit more stable when I'm talking and you're still, but when you start talking and animated, then it's sort of like a bit more glitchy and it's really interesting. And so I think actually to have a bit of both of those things going on, um, uh, and you know that it would, it would been difficult not to represent that because that's what I'm seeing. Um, but it's actually kind of quite, it's quite effective. It's, it's, it works quite nicely in, in, in the picture, I think. Um, but uh, so it's just trying, I'm just trying to like get the, the get the ba that sort of balance right and sort of see if there are areas where I, I could and should make it a bit sharper or a bit less. Our eyes like to, I think, like it when, uh, well, our minds like it when something's not completely sharp, where you don't get the whole story at once, where it has to make a bit of effort almost to piece some bits together. And I certainly find that sometimes I, do, I like paintings less when they're more finished. And I sometimes I, yeah, quite often get to the end of a picture, you get halfway through and think, this is great. And then at the end, it's like, it's lost something. You've done too much to it. And so you actually, you sometimes literally start rubbing bits away or just, you know, kind of um, add a few more viewpoints or, you know, there's a number of ways you can, you can sort of uh, introduce that sort of uncertainty, I guess, uh, ambiguity. Um, but I, I've, I've always liked things which are sort of semi-abstract, I think, more than totally realist or totally abstract. And I think it also kind of gets back to that thing. I think, I think it also reminds us of the way we remember things, which isn't a completely photographic thing anyway. You know, obviously, we've got parallel images, but which are ma matching up, but also someone's moving and at different times you're sort of focusing on different parts of their face or their body language. And, 
I think that's a yeah. It's a very interesting trying to sort of yeah um yeah forget about what the sort of photograph how a photograph would show something and actually think about how we retain images and remember things afterwards. It's also a bit more forgiving. <laughs> you, can get, you can make get away with more mistakes when you are when you're not worried about getting everything right. But it, yeah, that works. Then it's back to the caricature thing. As long as the things that are important you're kind of representing in the right way, or and if they if they are being distorted, they're being distorted you know, in in the direction you know of that. So yeah, you know, to, to help that caricature, I guess. Yeah. When you're writing a book, like you're doing at the moment, um, do you find yourself going back then once you've done it and sort of rereading it from the point? Because you're probably thinking about the content primarily early on, but then as you go on, the sort of style of it and that kind of thing, do you have to walk away from it for a while and come back to it? I mean, obviously, you can use other people's, you know, to edit it and give feedback on it. Yeah, I mean, I tend to um, do it chapter by chapter actually so so i don't tend to leave a chapter alone until i think it's finished um, but as you say then when the book's put together you send it off to an editor or something and they read it and they'll have comments and and it's quite often you know i didn't understand that you know sometimes you end up rearranging things you might need a deeper explanation of something that you needed later on in the book um so, but but I tend to just write. I, I, I it grows. So even within a chapter, I start with a, the paragraph, and then the next paragraph, next paragraph, and then I'll tend to reread that because I've done a couple of hours and I'm, I've had enough. I'll read it, and then I'll usually read it again when I come back the next day to start. I'll read through it again and then fiddle and then add some more on. So it grows, and and the the way that it works for me is it tends to be corrected as it goes. You know, to, to, so I'm, I'm, I don't move on until I'm happy with the bit that I've done. But that's just, uh, in fact, everybody's different. Hmm. Most of it, that's because I sit around for about three or four months before I write the book. Uh, and I know the arc, I, I know what the way that I think I'm going to explain it is I've worked out before I start, basically. Hmm. Uh, but then I go off and like, get carried away and go off on little deviations because you find little things when you're checking stuff. Hmm. And, and always, and this might be it's a question to you as well, when you're giving lectures or teaching um, art, um, it's always the case when you're teaching something that you find flaws in your understanding, yeah. either of your own process or some physical um, situation, you know, in terms of physics. You, teaching makes you... Uh, gives you a much deeper understanding of stuff that you think you knew, you, knew, you know, you, you take it for granted until you try and explain it and then you realise that you can't explain it to yourself, which means you don't understand it. Yeah, certainly. I think that goes for any time you're trying to um, rationalise something, you know, um, verbally, you know, uh, which is a sort of, I guess um, partly um, instinctive and partly obviously a visual thing, which uh, sometimes works because you're depicting something precisely because it is hard to put into words. Um, and so I think, uh, but it's still a good exercise to try and do it. Uh, and of course, then you um, also stop. You know, you know it's, it's healthy to question why you do certain things. Um, uh, and it's also interesting to hear what the questions people ask as well. And uh, that's when you, I think, I think that's only when I, when I started, I only really started to understand kind of what my style was to other people when I started, you know, listening to that kind of thing and letting people ask questions about it. Because by, you know, by definition, I guess, you know, the things that people are asking about are what's different, why am I doing things differently from how they perceive the sort of standard or normal way of doing something to be. Um, and uh, I was always worried that I had, like, there was so much deviation and there wasn't much consistency in my work. Uh, certainly early on, the first like, decade or so. And actually, certainly for, like, I think when I started doing that, you could sort of see that there are consistencies. I'd just been ignoring them because I guess they, they seemed so obvious. I, didn't, I really hadn't thought that there was another way of doing it.
Yeah, I think people often ask, and I'm probably thinking now about why, uh, yeah, how much I'm going to do to the more peripheral things. I tend to always, um, very often, um, you know, kind of, you know, sort of pay, you know, do a bit less as you kind of, you know, in different areas of the painting. Um, uh, I often do less with the hair. I've done a little bit with this one. I mean, it's not because. I yeah you know, I particularly dislike doing it. I, I but I have I am aware that sometimes I'll spend days painting someone's hair in great detail and then look at it and realize that it was better when I'd only just like done the initial few strokes. So trying to work out when the, when to do how much to that different parts of it. And same with the clothes. You know if you can suggest the clothes and give the sense of the body language, that's really important. And sometimes it's very interesting to be able to date a picture by immediately seeing the clothes and the hairstyle and those sort of ephemeral things which change with fashions, obviously. But it can also be very distracting. And actually, there are times when, you know, uh, that can take away from something which is otherwise kind of timeless, I guess. And, you know, I'd, I try not to make it, you know, make it totally definable, you know, um, what stays, especially when I've known someone for a few years, you kind of like, you know, what they used to look like and you can sort of, read what they're going to look like i kind of um uh, very often all oh, that seems to happen sort of a, a, a little bit whether, whether intentionally or not um and when you know the more little brush strokes you put in that more that can sort of like make something sort of look a bit older so but then you can go and soften those as well but i think the best thing is not to really think about that too much and once or twice i've made people accidentally look much older or younger um and then you know see that's that's that, that's annoying but for the most part you don't want to be thinking about that sort of thing we're also conscious of our age now and whether it's often the thing that people will sort of, you know, people's friends will sort of tease them about if the picture looks older or younger, because we're all so worried about that. It's our little sort of running scorecard on how we're doing in life. You know, oh, you know, are my friends, you know, I'm looking a bit better or worse than I should be. Um, but, you know, in 10 years time, you don't even think about that with photos, let alone a painting. You don't wander around the kind of National Gallery and look at the pictures and think, oh, yeah, let's do the, the maths. What, what were the dates? Let's see how old was he in this picture? the last thing you think about you're thinking about the story the artist is telling about the personality uh, and you know, all the other sort of narratives yes we, we talked earlier didn't we about um in an earlier session about the fact that these paintings will be a snapshot of a time though yeah in the sense that lockdown paintings they were made at a yeah. strange time in history no, I, love that. I, actually, I really like i hadn't thought about that really actually until you mentioned it but of course because all, 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 all the work does but of course there are specific constraints with this uh as well as the fact we're conscious very conscious of it uh, and a lot of the conversations about it um it will it is interesting and obviously in this case obviously the partly the format and the stylistic um uh kind of interpretation if you i suppose is a bit representative of the kind of exact way we're doing it but um, there's sometimes the things you notice only afterwards in terms of, you know, how... Yeah, because, of course, you know, you, you, I'm conscious of the sort of mood of the picture uh, or the mood of the sort of, like, you know, what I think of is that, that, that you know, entirely about what the subject was, was, was thinking and going through and that sort of thing. But uh, inevitably, there's a little bit of, you know, my mood comes into it as well. And that's partly why some things are more kind of animated because there's a lot of conversation going on. Um, uh, but also you can see points in your life when you were... You know, kind of doing a whole chunk of work in a certain way. You know, because um, you've painted lots of people, some of some some of whom have been in the studio, and I guess you've just painted. You know, mm. I think that you painted those pictures of George Bush, didn't you? I'm assuming George oh. Bush didn't come round to your house. Well, see, um, the, the thing with those, they, those were for a, a project where I was doing collages, and I was doing them, uh, and um, uh, mostly made from pornography, I'm afraid. But the um, the idea was to play around with people's reputations, and so that little series, and there was like I guess a dozen portraits, I took entirely from um, uh, pictures I found, basically. You know, I kind of like looked because I was trying to depict their, their public personas. Uh, and yeah, have a little sort of yeah, a little bit of fun with that, and then you know, sort of the little surprise you got when you realised what the thing was made of. And so yeah. you're absolutely right; that was one of those. Um, but all the paintings I've done um, have always been from life, at least partly. Yeah, obviously, you've got to be, you know, sometimes when you're busy and particularly when the subjects are busy, you end up doing a lot of it from photographs. But I've I've hardly ever done it where I haven't seen 
people at all. A couple of times when people, people, the friends have said, you know, I do a portrait of a you know, relative who's passed away or something like that. But um, for, the, for you, know, it's, it's, it's so much less interesting for me. And I think it loses authenticity if you don't have that first-hand experience of someone. Doesn't that mean that you have to do the whole thing with them sitting in front of you in the studio? Because obviously, you know, it's, 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 it's as much about actually just seeing how someone how their face you know changes and moves and reacts to things and um you know you can start to get a sense of who someone is and actually because people are sometimes quite self-conscious especially early on <coughs> i find like i can't look you know usually be sure i'm going to be getting someone i don't even often try for the first one or two sittings um and sometimes I'll, 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 it's only when you sort of say, right, okay, sitting's over, let's go out for lunch. And people sort of relax and stop, you know, kind of holding whatever pose they were trying to do. You, you actually see, you know, who they are. And so actually you sometimes get yeah, more benefit from you know, going out for lunch with them than from them sitting in front of you for several hours. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna, that's what related to what I was going to ask you, because I suppose my question was, obviously without naming names, I suppose you get some people who turn up in a, they've spent a lot of time getting ready because it's like a photo session in their yeah. mind, you know, so they've done, got their hair right and maybe, yeah. you know, their, 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 their makeup right and their clothes, they put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, as you can probably see, but it's part of this lockdown idea, I, I put no thought into it because I just, <laughs> this is what I look like at this time of day, right? Yeah. So I just, um, because I think that's interesting. But um, so I, I assume you would rather does it matter? You know, if someone's coming to you for a sitting, for a painting, um, does it does it matter? Is it important that they think they look their best, or that because you, you want to paint what they are and not what they? You don't want to paint someone uh, the plastic version of them that they may have created, you yeah. know, <laughs> by yeah. spending eight hours yeah. having their hair, whatever. Yeah. Um. I. Uh, I mean the. the in the end, you 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 paint what you what you're presented with. So um, I guess, and if you if you know someone well, and you know if they're looking, you know, they they you know, they've been in, been tanning themselves and doing all kinds of you know uh, sort of things which aren't how you normally imagine them. Um, when you don't know someone very well, you can't be sure of that. Uh, for the most part, I think people t tend to be, be themselves because I think they realise that's what this is supposed to be. Um, and uh, but you can't completely legislate for how much people are kind of you know giving you a, uh, a sort of a, a, a nicer, more you know uh, kind of airbrushed and um, uh, tidied up or uh, improved version of themselves. Yeah, you know, we all do it. You know, in a funny way, you know, we all do it on social media now. I think you know, and I, I defy anyone not to be doing it in some way. Even the people who are you know conscious, you know, slightly self consciously being you know unairbrushed even that's a bit of a pose and we all you know we all think a little bit of but yeah you know, no one just like puts things out there without looking at it again and thinking yeah uh, uh you know um actually um, how do i look in this what's in the background that kind of thing it's just you know it's part of our communication now um mm. so i think that um in a way if people don't see this as something different and 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 and, and then get these things are best when people are themselves and doing what you're doing which is you know um, yeah, there may be a reason if someone's you know a, a real performer and is you know, kind of known for having a very very sort of sharp look or whatever. Then you know, there's certain times when there are reasons for making people, you know, putting people in a slightly more glamorous version of of how they are um, uh, because that's part of the story. Um, but I think what you don't want to do is kind of you know kind of distort it or you know kind of airbrush it if you will uh, and pretend that it's not you know and pretend it's something else. Mm. Well, we're thinking about the kind of um, proportions of the sort of the, the face and the globe. I mean, of course, it's one of those things when you are actually in the room with someone. You know, this is like a, a step. Yeah, the, the kind of like proportions. Your proportions are not changing for the most part because of the distance of the lens. Um, it's a funny thing when you do the. the, the, the but I had that three D scan and done of the head. Of course, I never thought about this before. But of course, yeah, you because know, a human head is the size of a human head. But as soon as you start changing the proportions, and so it's, yeah, it's like kind of like a, a kind of like a quarter size or four times life size of course the we, we, the change in the way we look at it because the different distance our eyes are apart you know a, a change you know, you're seeing more of it when it's small and less of it when it's big 
Um, and of course, you know, you can hear about these sort of principles when you're sort of reading about sculpture and other things, but to actually witness it in a sort of like, you know, in an actual head, especially when it's your own, is a strange thing. I was supposed to do that, wasn't I? I was going to send you a 3D scan and I didn't. Well, maybe we can do that another day. It might be an interesting sort of separate exploration. All I was going to do with it was actually do a little bit of demonstrating lighting. That might be a separate little broadcast at some point um, mm -hmm. about, you know, it's partly just bringing it into as like one of those sort of 3D um, uh, kind of computer en um, engines to show some things, you know, some of the principles of lighting and that kind of thing. Um, we've had plenty to do and I'm still... I don't know. I think people can see um, where I'm getting to. I'm actually getting a bit more careful now because I feel like if I feel it's not it's not too far off, uh, and obviously I could do quite a lot more sort of um, tidying things. But um, I won't really know until I step right back. Uh, and maybe something the jawline that's not quite mm. right. I feel like I've made a bottom part of that maybe is a bit out. Let me just have a look at that. But it's one of those things where, you know, uh, if I had, you know, if it wasn't this sort of like pressure, the self-imposed pressure of saying, right, today I'm going to show him, um, then I might be sort of like thinking, well, I'll just come back tomorrow and have another look, uh, maybe the next day until I'm absolutely sure it's right. Anyhow, something there, isn't there? There's something not quite right there, guys. I don't think that's the thing that's bothering me slightly. I'm not sure why. Reflection, right? Yeah, something about that. That is a part of the There's also something there. Hmm. But yeah, so you basically, I'm sort of like doing these quick calculations of like, okay, I think that I can make that better, but if it makes it worse, which is, you know, just assessing the kind of relative risk of changing things which are sort of more or less right but what's nice about doing it this way is you work fast and you don't over overthink certain things and sometimes you get a, more of an energy i guess um and certainly a more sense of animation and something really someone really being there serious <laughs> 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 yeah. now. Yeah. It's getting tense now. Oh, I've done wrong down here. <laughs> yeah, I suppose this is the first time you've uh, had such a self-imposed deadline. It's like one of those yeah. TV shows. Yeah. And you've got five minutes. It's like yeah. Master painter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like... How's it going to be when it comes out the oven? <laughs> oh no, it's deflated. Um, yeah. I shouldn't have said that because there'll be some, um, one of those television people watching who thinks, what a great idea that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, painting against the clock, which is like doing physics yeah. calculations against the clock. It's completely counter to the whole yeah. spirit and uh, point of the enterprise. Yeah. Um, but there you go. That's probably a definition of television in yeah. some sense. <laughs> yeah, taking the sublime let's, and making it ridiculous. Yeah, let's see if we can invent a program that completely misses the point. So rather than just mm -hmm. <laughs> primarily yeah. missing the point. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Well, and also, I'm, I'm sort of like kind of making it competitive with myself to try and get to a certain point at a certain time. I think that yeah. And now, what's nice is the thing about, uh, yeah, it, it's partly because of the live format as well, you know, and now we've got five minutes left. <laughs> um, but we did that tap down music. Yeah. Did, 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 did it just yeah. relax you? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, De Dexter started playing all kinds of music when it was getting to the end of his just to sort of throw me off. Um, but um, it's, uh, yeah, but I think the idea of having this, you know, kind of building up to a moment when you show someone something um, is... Yeah, you know, it's quite. It, it, yeah, you know, it's it's a sort of a version of what happens anyway, because you know, obviously, you know, you're getting you have a sense of, kind of both of you of what what stage you're at, 
Um, and uh, still something slightly wrong there. Have I made it worse? Is it? Why don't you get up and have a look? Because yeah. you have literally got a few minutes left yeah. before you see things. <laughs> you can work on it off. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, so exactly. it doesn't mean I don't, I can't carry on improving it afterwards, but it still is. I am going to show them in a minute, so I don't want it to be, you know, totally too far off. Hmm. It's done now. It's funny because these seem, from my perspective, just watching you, immense concentration, but you must be making very tiny adjustments, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> yes, that's right, that's right. Uh, <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of, it's funny, I, I only have very, quite big brushes and really fine ones. And so <laughs> another thing, which I think some of the painters watching all have spotted already, is that it goes from one, slightly one extreme to another when I've been working on different parts of it. Um, I think the main thing is it's just something around here. There. It's not quite right. And that's just because when, when everything got locked down, you didn't bring your brushes home. Yeah, and I, I, I could I could go back and get a load more, um, but I thought actually there's something quite nice about these constraints. I mean, at some point I'll probably go to do it because it does it would help a bit. But at the same time, I feel like yeah, most people are probably in the same situation that they haven't got access to you know all the kit they would like or maybe even normally have, and therefore uh, there's something about the constraints again, which kind of yeah, I think probably a part of the story going back to that. So yeah, it was the point. That was the whole point of it. Um, uh, Oh You've got four minutes. I've got four minutes. Okay, fine. Look, okay, I think we're gonna have to show you. And we could, we could, we could run over by a few minutes, couldn't we? Could we could start this. Are we allowed to do that? We'd have to start again. Okay, have another stream. Okay, we need, we need. Well, maybe we should have a, we start the stream again for the for, 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 for him seeing it. Maybe that's where we're going to do it. anyway. So when we get to the end of the hour, we'll start the um. This is on Instagram anyway. The, the, the live stream we can just kind of roll over. Buying myself a few more precious minutes. Um, damn, something's gone wrong, hasn't it? It's just slightly wrong down here. I'm gonna step back for a second. Oh, it's not, it's not what I thought it was actually. Oh, God, it's so different when you look away. He's looking a bit fresh faced actually. Okay, okay. yeah, that was a good thing to do. Okay. So I don't know if you want to round this up and then... Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to say is I am... Um, I promised to show Brian today. I think... I think it's kind of nearly there. I think I have done some... There's something I wanted to like look at again a bit in this part of it. Um, but I definitely feel like it's sort of getting close now. And I think, you know, um, there's something to be said for having this moment of... Anyway, even if you're not totally sure about it. What do you think, Mrs. Yo? Do you think it's got better or worse in the last little while? You're making sort of, like, sort of worrying faces at me as if you know it's... No, I'm, I'm partly worried about the time too. Okay, um, I need to put it, hold on. I don't think it's obviously worse. No. Fine, fine. Okay, well that's the main thing. That's the, <laughs> I just, I can't, because I've, I've been looking at every slight change. I can't really sort of like compare it to because I know it was sort of like it's been getting slightly better each time anyway okay so okay, uh, in that case what we're gonna, so we're gonna okay cool so what then we we're just give it a minute and then 
Um, I think we are pretty much good to go. She's just another life. Okay, cool. In that case, Brian, are you near a machine where you could look at it? Um, we able to look it up on our website um, or one some. Let's oh, wait. For people. Oh, what do you think? I, you, so, I should. I could turn the thing round for you to see it. Otherwise, on FaceTime. That's the other way yeah. to do it. Should we try that? Yes. Yeah. Is Gio Hello. around? Is someone in the room there with you? you? Can film it from your end as well. I am being filmed. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh -oh. Well. Okay. Let's see now. Um, I think it's okay. Right. Let's have a look. This is it. So this is going to be Brian seeing his painting. This could be a, 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 the end of a long and happy friendship. <laughs> well, I think that's fantastic. Really, I think that's superb. And I know we talked about well, this. Yeah, you, you have to say that. You have to say action. that. <laughs> but I, I, that is just terrific, I think. I mean, it's quite a remarkable thing that um, you... Because that, that's what uh, the thing that people say about me. I, I smile even when I talk about the end of the universe yeah. and the, the heat death of all things. Yeah. You know? Um, and uh, It's funny, actually, it's, you know, there's, a, there's more of a smile there than I think any painting that I can remember, certainly for a while, quite a long time. Um, but I guess also, yeah, we've been chatting and you've been smiling a lot and just the whole... I think it's quite nice, actually, that sense of animation. Um the uh, particularly the eye, I think you can get away with the eyes smiling anyway a bit more. But it's like and that's why I was slightly wondering towards the end. Is like, so like is, it, is it slightly too much of an expression? But I, I, it certainly is for me. It feels very characteristic of you. And maybe that's I think, you, yeah, I think you've got you've got something right because I've noticed. Um, you know, cause I suppose we change our expression slightly over the years. So we, we you know, can you see it first? And particularly someone like me because I've got. When we're filming, we get I, I get we take press photographs, you know. So mm. when I've done a, a piece to camera or something in a particularly spectacular place, then the camera person will take you know fifty photographs yeah. of me, so we can get some. And they tend to be on my cameras because I'm a bit of a camera geek. I always yeah. I always have my camera there, so they tend so I get them all. So I've got these huge numbers. And what I've noticed, which is really interesting with that painting, is over the years I, I kind of developed a tendency to smile slightly more asymmetrically for some reason hmm. like just like it's a little sort of i don't know it's a tiny little thing and i've noticed it in photographs and you've got that you've hmm. got that slight like one side of the mouth just it's a little just a little off center little which, grin which, and, and and i've really i've noticed that um, which you know there's something that, really, there's something interesting actually i was going to say um which on that note m most people ask do smile slightly asymmetrically I've seen you do it on both sides, which is more unusual. Most people kind of like tend towards one side if when it's asymmetrical. But I've seen you go both ways. I was trying to work out which one, if there was a difference, because some people do so, have a smile they do when they really find something funny and the smile they do when they're just being polite. And I was trying to work out whether it, you went one way <laughs> for one side and, and one way for the other. I don't think there was... So maybe you're doing less... You know, um, Less of one. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's one of those interesting things. I hadn't. Um, uh, I, I can't think of anyone else who I've seen who does does that a bit. But um, and it seemed to be quite consistent. Um, but maybe maybe, um, maybe your kind of family members can sort of like you know um, gauge it better than I can. Uh, what I thought when I was looking at because I was looking at some recently because some someone wanted some photographs for something, so I went through them and then. Um, and I went back quite a way. I just was looking. I was looking really for spectacular locations because mm. it was about locate. It didn't really matter about the time frame, you know. And I've got these hundreds of photographs going back 10, 12 years. That, are, and I think part of it is that ultimately, because I've had my photographs taken and made so many television programs, I basically don't really give a shit anymore. <laughs> so, so I'm not trying to pose. I'm trying to not yeah. look stupid because it's supposed yeah. to be a press photograph. But I'm much more. I'm not as bothered, you know, so it's, it's, it's less constructed. But I think, and I thought, I decided that was why in the later press photographs, I tend to look more, um, I don't know, probably more like I actually do. Mm. And less, less, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever that. 
I think we'll care less if we get older. Well, they, I mean, this is brilliant. I think, you know, I mean, we've, I think we've got the... I love it. Can you tell me? Just yeah. out of interest, I love it. So I think it's mm. brilliant. Which bits were you, you said, oh, I'm concerned about something? Mm. And this air, which area is it that you're concerned well, about? There's something I've been concerned about all the way through, and I realise it's partly because of it's a relatively big, you know, on the canvas, you know, you're that big. And I, I sometimes do them bigger, but I normally would do it when I've got space to walk backwards and forwards across the studio to be kind of de-checking it because of the distortions, you know, this, you know, as a, I'm looking at it here because I'm, you know, I should probably make that, put it higher, that might have made it a bit better actually. Um, but, you know, your, your, your perspective kind of distorts things as well. Um, and uh, so I've got this thing constantly being sort of like, not sure whether I've got the sort of like, uh, sort of proportions of the face, a bit like we were saying about the kind of the, 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 the way you look at the world. Um, so that, and I'm still not sure about this, but I'm gonna, you know, I think it'll be easier when I come back, you know, when I step back and when I come back later. I don't think it's it's far wrong. When I step back just now, I suddenly realised it wasn't as badly wrong as I thought it was, and I then corrected it, I think. There's still something very slightly I'm not sure about, about the sort of mouth on this side, because, and, and whether I've, you know, exaggerated something too much, um, maybe it's okay. I just worry that I maybe, because another thing is when someone's moving a lot, um, as everyone does, you know, even when it's subtle, you sometimes get different, it's like, you know, you get one bit of the face is from one angle and one from another. Over time, you usually just sort of correct it by, you know, like, um, gradually averaging out. So that's the, what, the other thing. But otherwise, yeah, I do think that um, most of the things I was worried about this morning have kind of, um, I think, come together all right. Um, but I think, yeah, I know, it's good. And, and, and anyway, I'm, I'm glad you, you, it's, you know, it, it makes sense to you as well. Um, uh, and I'd love to hear for what um, uh, Mrs. Cox thinks of it at some point, because um, she'll probably be have a more analytical eye for it. Um, so maybe you can, I can talk to her later on. But um, Brian, thank you. Uh, it's been a, a really, um, I think, one of the most enjoyable, um, continually enjoyable sessions. Um, uh, and all, always we learn a lot with you. Um, but it's been, it, 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 it's good. And um, thank you for being so generous with your time and thoughts and that's, and all that. Um, and, uh, well, look, um, uh, yeah, I think we're, I think we're done. Um, thanks, well, guys. Just, thanks for watching. And Brian, Brian, Brian wants to sign off quickly. <laughs> I just say, well, I just want to say thank you because I really enjoyed it. Um, you have, you have more than more than one talent. <laughs> that sounds like a favorite. But as well as being a painter, you are a great interviewer. And oh, that's, uh, that I didn't, yeah, I didn't know that because obviously we, we know each other. But um, you don't interview me when I come round to your house for a drink, and uh, <laughs> I think you're tremendously good at it. So I think you have another, another well, career. I think, I, 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 I think the, t the talent there is just in, in, in choosing the subjects cleverly because I think you and Dexter have been very, very good at talking when I've had to concentrate. Um, uh, but thank you, that's very nice of you to say so. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep it going for a while. Was that? A new Woden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. On seven o'clock, BBC yeah. One. I've commissioned it. Like. Yeah, great. Can you tell what it is yet? Um, <laughs> you lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> um, well, yeah, you know, I think mean, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it going for a while. Anyway, thanks, Brian. <laughs> lovely man. Okay. Talk soon. You guys come back soon. I'm going to do another one, I guess, maybe. What's it, Saturday? Yeah, we'll also have another one next Saturday. Thanks. Maybe <laughs> we'll stop the stream, probably. Uh, stop. <laughs>